let's let's get started hi everybody i'm jamil betanov uh, already uh, paul introduced me so i'll get started right away uh, i want to talk about rappers newspaper rappers today it's going to be very introductory high level but hopefully i'll show some interesting stuff uh, first i'll talk about what they are why to collect why collect them and then i will go into you know why how to collect collect rappers there are there are many ways you can collect rappers i will have a fairly large section on efo rappers rapper efos uh, because as you know i'm interested in efos but that's also you get lots of variety there and at the very end yeah, hopefully we'll have time i'll uh, i'll uh, i'll i'll uh, bring you in into an obsession that i have <laughs> so so that probably will the, be the most fun part of this uh, presentation and you'll be surprised so what are newspaper rappers they are essentially long uh, strips of paper that you can wrap around the rolled up newspaper and they have a printed on stamp that is the indicium and uh, they were very popular because they made it very simple to uh, to to essentially distribute literature and paid newspapers and so on and uh, and uh, they 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 are probably will see that they are the first probably they were used very widely for junk mail so they are probably the first large use of junk mail they promoted the use of junk mail and uh, they uh, really the first one started 1855 in 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 england and then they went up to the 1980s in the us they started in 1861 i believe i i meant to look that up and i didn't but i think it was until like the 40s that they were used and they they stopped using them uh they they show in uh, in auctions uh, you really otherwise don't see them too often except uh, on ebay or on del camp you can make a search for rapper and that is that is uh, uh, that is uh, you know you will get lots of hits and uh, there are not as many collectors of wrappers as as other types of postal stationery like postcards and uh, and uh, and and uh, and envelopes and so on but uh, uh, i like that because uh, you know the prices are not as high as some of those so you can afford uh, you know most of them and if you are in a booth uh, usually you have to ask a dealer specifically if they have any wrappers and then they will bring them out it's unlikely that they will lay them out on a table uh, that you can uh, that you can you know look at them like other things so uh, here uh, we have uh, a wrapper of of montserrat on the right side uh, which is in the caribbean and then there is a german wrapper uh, horizontally so they were there are different uh, shapes as you see uh, typically the long ones were sold in uh, sheets of uh, like 10 or some in you know 10 at a time and then you could cut them apart we'll see that a little later uh, it's uh, yeah that's that's uh, that's essentially the you know to get started now why 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 should we collect why collect newspaper wrappers okay i think they are interesting as a postal stationery class it's it's uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun because many of them actually were used commercially by far i'd say maybe even you know next to postal cards they were the a very high percentage used commercially many of them were torn off newspapers so they are in bad shape uh, if they are used uh, but still they are rather interesting uh, there are many subtypes that you can specialize on you can collect by country there are specimens there are advertising wrappers they have their wrappers yeah. postal markings and 
and, and so on and so forth. There are unusual destinations. So for example, if you look on the screen now, what uh, that I'm showing, uh, this one is, is, has been sent from New York to Cairo, Egypt, right? That's, that's an interesting destination. This one here is a, is, a, is, a, is a Great Britain wrapper and you see it has like a, a I guess it says like a postage due. Uh, it says here that uh, above two ounces, uh, I guess uh, uh, I'm not sure one penny more to pay. So this, uh, you find always uh, things like that with wrappers when you look at them carefully uh, that are interesting. Uh, let, let me talk for a second about since wrappers are not as popular, how you can get, where you can get information about wrappers in case you are, you are interested. The, I'd say today the, 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 the authority is this three volume uh, uh, catalog by uh, Jan Kosniowski. He's based in, in Britain and uh, it is an extremely thorough catalog and uh, I'm hoping at some point somewhere to write a, a review of that catalog. Before Kosniowski came along, the standard was Higgins and Gage, but of course Higgins and Gage is, is number one is general postal stationery, whereas Kosniowski is newspaper, uh, newspaper wrapper specifically. So this is uh, Kosniowski and uh, then uh, what you have, uh, uh, then you have uh, specialty, uh, specialty societies like uh, UPSS. They have uh, their, their publication, Postal Stationery. Very frequently you will find newspapers uh, uh, and uh, notes about, uh, about newspaper wrappers. There are also uh, all over the world, there are postal stationary societies, and all of them uh, have uh, at times uh, newspaper wrapper related articles. Uh, now, and also most country catalogs have at least the basic listing. One thing that I, that I didn't mention is the UPSS has also uh, a postal stationary catalog of which I showed here two uh, essential the 19th and 19th and 20th century catalogs and these are about envelopes and wrappers and they have for us this is probably the most detailed source of information that you will find uh, then uh, if you are if you go if you want to look on the web an excellent starting point is stampdomain.com this is actually a website maintained by Kosniowski so that's a good starting point. There are lot, there, there's lots of pointers to other websites. And uh, so quickly on a personal note, what got me started with newspaper wrappers? Uh, my, uh, my grandfather, my mother's father uh, was a stamp collector. I believe that he, he at some point he had an intention of becoming a stamp dealer and collected and bought a large number of stamps. Unfortunately, he, dies, he died very prematurely. The family fell on hard times and most of it was sold in a fire sale. However, the cheaper stuff wasn't sold. And many years ago, I got my hands on whatever, on the remainders. And these newspaper wrappers were uh, from the Ottoman Empire were amongst them. And actually, I, I really liked them. Uh, First, I looked at them for maybe 20, 30 years. And one day I say, why don't I dive into this deeper? And that was the beginning of my newspaper wrapper collection. So I want to go into now how to collect newspaper wrappers. So one way obviously is to collect by country, okay? And different countries have very different characteristics as it comes to newspaper wrappers here is an example of, the example is Austria. And in Austria, you know, they were heavy users of newspaper wrappers. That is uh, also 
you, they work very much used for advertising and similar. So here on the left, you have a, what is called a illustrated newspaper wrapper. Uh, and I think that actually it's very pretty with, uh, with the design. Uh, by the way, newspaper wrappers with, with, that are illustrated are a, part, are a category in themselves, uh, in particular for, there are some countries like Switzerland, Austria, Great Britain, and the US. We'll see all examples that have very pretty newspaper wrappers. And on the right side, this is the first newspaper wrapper of Austria, uh, uh, of Austria, and uh, it's uh, in Higgins Engage, it's number one for the newspaper wrappers. And this shows you that actually they, how they were, uh, they were manufactured and sold. So if they are horizontal, there are good chances that they were uh, sold in such uh, sheets of paper, and then the purchaser would cut them apart and and use them. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's how many wrappers were sold. The U.S. wrappers and other countries were different, so that depends on the country. Here are some Swiss wrappers, and uh, on the left, top upper left, is like uh, basically an official wrapper of of the of the Office for Development and Trade, Swiss Office of Development and Trade. Swiss wrappers tend to be very, also very nice. They have a great variety. Uh, so, uh, and uh, <coughs> so they, they, are, they are really nice to collect. Uh, in a second, I'll show more. But uh, what I want to do is I want to take a closer look at this one. So, this is, this is, and we'll see more of this. This is a, uh, I'm convinced that this is a junk mail wrapper. And on the top, it's, uh, you see with the hand stem, it's written, uh, nicht refusieren rückporto inliegen. That means do not refuse return postage is uh, enclosed, okay? But unfortunately, the person to whom they send this junk mail was already dead. So it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's uh, the, the postal marking I talk is kind of funny. Uh, now, if we look at uh, Swiss wrappers, as I said, they can, be, they can be very pretty. There are different types of wrappers in the sense of how they were created. Uh, there are basically wrappers that were issued by the post office. Then there were wrappers that there are two types of wrappers that I'll go into it also a bit later in more detail, but they are called stamp to order or printed to private order. So uh, stamp to order means you could take your paper as a, on which you wanted your wrapper paper to the post office and the post office will would imprint on it a single stamp or several if you wanted. Uh, that was very much in use in Austria and in uh, in in uh, in, uh, in Great Britain, for example. Uh, then printed to order means that you could order from the post office wrappers, and they would print your 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 uh, business's name, a corner card, or something like that on the wrapper, and give it to you. So this is. Uh, I believe that this is uh, printed to private order, but to tell you the truth, I'm not 100% sure. Oops. So now here, these are also Swiss wrappers. That's another way that, that is interesting to collect wrappers. These are different wrappers that were basically uh, uh, issued by the same pretty much by the same organization, okay? This was a, a, a company that sold gardening supplies and seeds. And at the left you have, I believe that, uh, so this is like 1903 or 1908 or something like that. It's, it's relatively an early one and uh, what is interesting with this is you can see how the business evolved. This was, uh, this was 
a wrapper that advertised the business and the business apparently was uh, also sending out a magazine or maybe they were selling the magazine as an adjunct to their business. Sometime later in uh, 1911, they, you now you see that the, 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 the business as such is not mentioned uh, the gardening business and seed business, but it is sold as a magazine. So only the magazine in man is mentioned. It has the same name, the magazine, as the, as the other one, Schweizer Schopplanz and Freud. And, and uh, however, the, the publisher is the same company. So that's how you put them together. And then some years later, you can see that uh, they changed against the format, again, the format. Uh, and uh, now they are, uh, they are there. Now the, 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 the magazine has become the organ of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a society for the development of uh, uh, Swiss gardening, basically. So the, the character has changed. Now, what is interesting here is to look also how the how the indicia change. This is an early uh, indicium, uh, uh, and then this is a later one. And finally, here, interestingly, there is a compound indicium. So uh, this uh, you can uh, uh, that is not a rare occurrence that you have compound indicia on wrappers. And these were again, these were. Uh, stamp to order. So probably this company, I'm assuming, they just took their printed wrappers to the to the post office, and the post office uh, just printed this indicia. And maybe even what happened is the postage rate went up, and they they got caught with this uh, with this uh, wrappers, and uh, then they had to add postage, and they again took them to the post office to maybe to add some additional postage. Uh, you you also f you also find uh, of course in the they were used very widely at, in the British colonies okay and uh, uh, you will find uh, 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 the same design used in many different colonies some colonies were uh, used different designs but these like Victoria or King Edward. They were very common, uh, commonly used, shared by many colonies. On the, the left one has an additional imprint called specimen. Uh, specimen familiar from stamps also, where every member of the UPU had to provide to the UPU a certain number of samples, uh, often uh, label specimen or in German muster or whatever. And those were distributed by the UPO to mem UPU to member countries so that any postal administration could, uh, could tell whether an incoming piece of mail uh, carried something that was a stamp, a post that was legitimate or not. Uh, you find many, many rappers from different countries uh, uh, that are marked specimen, and there are people who actually specialize in this. Now we come to a favorite uh, subject of uh, area of many, many rapper collectors, which are the illustrated US rappers. Uh, when I started collecting, these were kind of on the, on the cheap side, but they have gone a lot up in price. And they are very interesting because they really show the businesses were advertising them. Uh, uh, and uh, it is like a slice of history almost. Uh, uh, the starting on the upper left, the gold crank, honestly, I have no idea what it is, uh, uh, but it's a nice design anyway. Then moving to the right, the, un the un anhydrosis sanitarium. This is this is something. This anhydrosis sanitarium was 
something that was invented by what I would call a quack doctor. He came up with this before he did that. He was a photographer and he invented a few photography related items. And then he came, he invented this. And it's something where you could, somebody could walk into it and basically is the equivalent of a sauna of uh, where the head sticks out so only the body is is in uh, is uh, in is sweating and the idea was that this is helpful for rheuma uh, rheumatism and things like that so here this he eventually uh, uh, created uh, a sanitarium somewhere in uh, in new england and uh, it became a fair size business. People would go up there to, to, get, to get treated against a, var- a variety of illnesses. Then we go here, this is, this is a very pretty one uh, where you have, uh, you have a carriage and you can see that on the left side, it says manic- manufacturer and dealer in carriages of every description in Rahway, New Jersey. Uh, I have two of those. Uh, and uh, they, these have become rather expensive, this particular design. It's, I guess I've seen a few, but uh, not many. And here, this is what I believe is a precursor of F.A.O. Schwartz, the toy store in New York. This is an early, I guess, uh, very early on when they were were perhaps quite new. The name is a little bit different, Schwartz Toy Bazaar. And uh, also this is a slice of history. Some of these have rather intricate engravings. That's also something that makes it really nice. Another uh, here, we have wrappers that are just like the Swiss wrappers that have been uh, used by by a single organization. These people were uh, wholesale grocer and importers. And uh, uh, so they were, uh, they were, uh, they, you find lots of wrappers of this com- from this company. However, what is interesting is generally they are different. So uh, between the different examples, the address may be different. For example, you look here, if you are looking, it says post office box 3482. And here it says uh, 1013. So the, their location has presumably changed, but also from addition to addition, from example to example, there are lots of changes in terms of the fonts used. So it creates uh, a lot of variety that you can, you can specialize in and collect. Here, uh, it is also possible to collect the wrappers by postal markings. That's, uh, that's, uh, that, uh, in several, you know, in many countries, you find the wrappers with postal markings. The Swiss, though, they are particularly precise in terms of how they deal with these things. So what you see here is that uh, on the lower left, it is marked gratis. So my guess is that this is also some kind of junk mail, relatively early junk mail. And on the right, it says refusé, and there is a uh, signature. So the recipient, even though it was free, refused it, refused acceptance. And then the uh, the delivery, the post, uh, the 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 postal employee applied uh, a label in uh, German and French, indicating that there is uh, the 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 item has been refused. Uh, Here you have also a similar case, except that this time 
the recipient is is gone. He's he has traveled away. Upgrade means traveled away. So uh, that is. And however, then under the, somebody in a, with a, with a marker. Uh, uh, wrote refuse also. So that means that it's not clear whether the guy was really has had gone away or whether he just didn't want to have this. I don't know why these things were always refused, even though uh, they were free. So I guess there must have been a hook in it that people didn't want to deal with it. Now, you will see that these, uh, the two right ones are are from the same, apparently, well, they are from the same company, all, probably uh, written by the same person. The address was written by the same person. So this somebody in that company had the job of mailing probably large numbers of these, given that I have come across quite a few of these wrappers. One more thing that I wanted to mention is that the from this between different from country to country, uh, the indicia are handled in different ways. What I mean is that in some countries, you were allowed to cut out the indicium and use it like a stamp on a different piece of mail. In some countries, you are you were not. In the United States, it was illegal. It is it was illegal to cut an indicium. Uh, and still is for a postal card and use it as a stamp on a piece of on a piece of mail. Uh, in Switzerland, it was the same, and therefore you will notice that the indicia they are not cancelled because the once the wrapper is cancelled, the indicium cannot be used again. In other countries, like in 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 Great Britain, uh, that's not the case. You could cut out and use the indicium as a piece of uh, as a piece of uh, as a stamp, and therefore the post office made sure that when an item was cancelled, actually the cancel was on the indicium itself. In Switzerland, you didn't need that. I have seen German pieces of mail where apparently indicia were cut out from a piece of postal stationery and placed on, on a letter. So I guess the Germans uh, allowed that too. Now we are moving on to uh, uh, to some uh, uh, stamp to order and printed to private order. First, at the bottom, I want to talk about the bottom one. So this is also a company, uh, the uh, a publisher of educational supplies that that send out a very large number of wrappers uh, and. It's also one of those cases where the, 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 the writing and the font and the format has changed over time. Now, this is clearly a stamp to order. Why is that? Because you can tell that the, what they did is they had this type of paper, they applied the label and they took then this to the post office and the post office applied printed the stamp on it. And what is really fascinating here is that they didn't care really too much where this, where this printing went. And here you see that it is uh, mostly on the label, but partially uh, outside of the label on the wrapper paper itself. So this is, I think this is very neat and uh, it shows that it is clearly a, a stamp to order uh, uh, piece. Uh, uh, now, these are the two. They are from an organization called German and uh, Austrian Alpinist uh, Society. I guess this was a, a, a society that a club that for for people who were skiing. Uh, they had members, as the name implies, both in Switzerland and in uh, in uh, in Germany. Most of them in Germany, and uh, you can tell something about the 
I see, I have here two examples of Germany only, but the Swiss ones are relatively scarce. And the explanation that I have heard is that, uh, I'm sorry, the Austrian ones are relatively scarce because the explanation that I have heard is the Austrians, generally they would receive it and just rip it apart and throw it in the garbage can. The Germans, they, were very they would very carefully preserve them and keep them. So you find a very large number of those uh, in circulation. Many of them were pre-canceled and you can, and this is, this is what you see here. In one of the cases, in the, in the, the right one is kind of a vanilla one. Uh, although over time, the pre-cancels change, uh, in the early years, you find pre-cancels that are, that are applied by hand like a cancel, like a regular cancel. But you know that it is a pre-cancel because there are examples where the address label overlays the cancel. So that means the cancel was applied before the address label was applied. This, is, this makes it a pre-cancel. Uh, on the left one, you have a case that has two particular, uh, particular uh, characteristics. Number one, as you see, there are two indicia. So I'm guessing at this point that there might have been some inflation and they needed to apply extra postage, but also you can see because of the way this is cut that they were sold in stripes by the post office and eventually they were cut, uh, they were cut apart in stripes and then the labels were applied. So if they weren't cut carefully, you got this where you have on one wrapper indicia from two wrappers and then probably I can imagine well the way from the examples that I have seen that the top one might well have been very narrow and has only uh, partial indicia. That's very possible. Now, speaking about inflation, uh, it is not uncommon to see that multiple wrappers were used together as one. Uh, the the right one is a Swiss wrapper. Two of them were used as one wrapper. So I guess that might be a case where maybe whatever was being made was too heavy uh, because there were generally weight restriction of what you, can, you could mail with those. It had to be always just printed matter, but also there were weight restrictions. The upper left one is a German wrapper and it is, it's not only Germany, but it's Bavaria specifically, okay? And it is interesting, not only because it's a double wrapper, but also because it's a very unusual destination. It, it was sent to Singapore and Singapore is referred to hinter, as hinter Indian, rear India, which is an indication that essentially, uh, that at the time Singapore and Malaysia probably in general was seen as a as a as an addendum as a part of India at least in the in the probably in the British way of looking at it it was all one part of uh, South, southern Asia and greater India here you have a wrap you have actually a, where five wrappers were used at once as one. So I guess this is some more serious case of inflation, I'm guessing. And uh, by the way, and these are not, these wrappers are not very rare. They are probably scarce, but they are definitely not rare. And I have seen many cases where of these five wrappers together, and they always are sent from uh, Bucharest in uh, in Romania to to Berlin to uh, to a newspaper called Judische Rundschau. So this makes it not just a wrapper, not just uh, interesting five wrappers in ones, 
but also it's a piece of Judaica actually. So that's uh, so it has many interesting aspects. Now I am going to come now the next section. We are going. I'm going to go through a fair number of EFOs, just like most postal items, you find errors, freaks, and oddities of wrappers, on wrappers, okay. and, uh, and they are very common. So the first one, the first example that I have is our missing color wrappers. On the left one, you have a US wrapper, and the US wrappers were generally embossed embossed and then there was a color applied to it. So in this case, the color is not applied. You get a wrapper that has just the embossing and that is an albino. Now albinos as postal stationary items are certainly not rare. Uh, they are very affordable and I think that they are a lot of fun. Uh, there are, I have seen quite a few wrappers that, that are albino. On the right one, it's also a missing color. It's a Mexican uh, wrapper. And the missing color that is here is the indicium that what would have been the indicium. So uh, clearly this wrapper was printed in two passes. One pass is <coughs> where the, 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 the text and image in general were printed. And then the second pass was, which would be the, the, uh, the controlled uh, valuable part that was printed. So, uh, and here it has been printed. So it is, a, it is a, as an example of, of missing, missing color or color omitted rather. <laughs> another example on the IFO is a color shift. Here you have also another uh, Mexican wrapper where the indicium has been shifted clearly out of, out of place. So that's, that's a color shift. This is, this is, this is, this shows, both pictures show all pictures show the same wrapper and they show each, each, each one shows the front and the back. So this is what some people call a set of, some people call an offset. Uh, these uh, these uh, things happen in one of two ways in general. And I'm not quite sure which one would have happened here. One of them is when you have a sheet of wrappers printed and they are laid on top of the, the, an earlier printed sheet where the color has not yet uh, dried. That's one case. And the second one is if they go through some printing apparatus, sometimes the, 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 there is no paper that goes through in a particular pass and the color is deposited on the on the plate and, and then the next time the, the 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 next sheet comes through essentially both sides are printed because there is there is color on the plate and that is that is that is there so it is either one of these uh, uh, and maybe one day I'll ask Dave Hunt uh, what is thought about this is it could be either one. I think this is the second one that I mentioned. Miscut wrappers are, you know, are also found. These are three different types of miscuts actually. The last one is where the a miscut is due really to a paper fold. If this had been uh, a sheet of uh, of of uh, of stamps, you would have gotten what is called crazy perforations, probably. But in this case, you just guess just a, I guess a crazy rubber. The middle one was when the 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 wrappers were being cut apart. Uh, 
the 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 paper shifted, so you have pieces from two different indicia on the same wrapper. So it's essentially the equivalent of a perforation shift for stamps. The right one uh, is where the uh, the paper was skewed at the time it was cut, and therefore, as you see the both the indicium as well as the name of the country, Republica Argentina, they are skewed. And not only is it skewed, but it is also shifted so that on the right side, you see part of Republica, and then Argentina would, be, would have been on the right side of that, but here is on the left side of the wrapper. The interesting point here is that this, uh, this shift, this uh, miss misprinted or miscut wrapper didn't prevent the sender from using it and it went through the mail and there was no issue with that. I guess as long as the, the, the indicium was there, it was tolerated. Here is another type of oddity, which are rejection, rejection markings. These rejection markings are very uh, frequently encountered also in US stamps where uh, these, if these if stamps are printed in a web that is in a, in a sheet of paper, rather in a roll of paper that continuously is going through a, through a, through a printing machine, uh, when there is a mishap that happens, the personnel, the printing personnel don't want to stop the, 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 the web print from printing, so they just mark up what is that there is something wrong there with the intention that later when there is a quality check, these things are more likely to be found and removed before they get, they get packaged to be sent to a post office. Sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. So when they don't, you get something like that that might have been sold of a post office counter with a rejection marking. You find that actually a lot on US stamps. And I guess here you find it too. Here is another type of error where there was a foreign object that was on top of the paper at the time that the printing was applied. And this is, you may think that this is a crease, but it is not a crease because actually when you look at it really under magnification, you see that there is no, uh, no sign of the paper having been folded. So this is a clear cut case that there was some probably piece of paper or something like that, that got stuck there. And therefore the, the color from the press was not applied at that particular uh, location. Here is a, a crease. So here you have a pre-printing crease. In other words, the paper, there was, the pa there was a paper crease at before that was formed before the, uh, the sheet of paper went through the printing press. And then later when you uh, pull it apart, that's what you get between the N and the A, they are out of, they are not aligned and there is a space, an extra space. That's, so that means that at the time that it was printed, that didn't exist that space later when the, uh, the, when the wrapper was eventually pulled apart uh, so that the, the, the crease became visible. Now, the interesting really point here, in my opinion, is that the crease still existed at the time that the sender uh, address the the, the 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 wrapper because you will see that also the 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 print the handwriting uh, is interrupted there and has the same type of uh, uh, essentially the same type of separation like the printed area. Another type of error that you have is a double overprint. Uh, this is, I had mentioned earlier, the specimens 
on the on the British colonies uh, in in uh, Spanish speaking countries the equivalent was muestra which means also specimen in Spanish uh, they are not rare but of course here a double overprint is that is now a bit rarer Now, now we are getting to design errors. Design errors are particularly fun, I think. Uh, they are not, they are really mostly an oddity, not an error as such, because every, when you have a design error, obviously every uh, item that has been printed of that type has the same error. So there is no, there is no extra uh, premium for rarity. But usually when you have a design error, it means that somebody has royally messed up. So on the left one, you can tell on the, on the, the, the enlarged one is the correct spelling. But when you are looking at the top here, you will notice that the name of the country is misspelled. It's not Republica, it's Republica. So what that means is not only whoever types it, it got it wrong, but whoever proofread it got it wrong, and whoever packaged it to send it to a post office didn't notice the error. And, you know, who knows, maybe even the clerk who sold it didn't notice the error. So I think that such a design error, it's so, so obvious that nobody caught it. It's, to me, it's amazing. The right one is a, is a, is a Mexican rapper again. And here, if you are looking at the word Fahia, it is written with three L's, whereas actually the correct spelling is with two L's. So this is also a design <laughs> error because it is a spelling error. So this is, these are the, these are the, the uh, this is probably most of the types of errors that I have. However, I have to admit that while I was thinking about this earlier today, I came up with a couple of additional errors that I forgot to include. So maybe another time. Uh, uh, really what you can tell from what I presented is number one, I am partial to Mexican rappers because there were quite a few and also Argentinian rappers. I liked them because they, they were sloppy and I guess they had many errors. <laughs> and, and also I am partial to errors themselves because I like them. So, uh, and, uh, and uh, actually probably in the near future, I will be putting somewhere an article together concerning errors on wrappers. So that's, that will be one of the upcoming projects for me. Now, uh, I want to go next to, to, to my obsession. How about that? So when I just had, was thinking about collecting wrappers, that is, I had found the Ottoman wrappers that I showed you, but I had no other wrappers. One day I was browsing the, the stamp store, APS stamp store. And I came across these three wrappers. They were sold as separate lots, but I said to myself, geez, isn't it interesting that there are three wrappers who, addressed, who are addressed to one individual? I kind of thought that that was kind of neat. And I bought them. They weren't expensive by any stretch of the imagination. I told it was uh, very reasonable for the amount of fun that I would derive to have these three wrappers. And then I forgot about it. Until one day, I was, I think I might have been either on eBay or Tel Camp. I noticed that there is another rapper addressed to F. Salzman at 30 Justice in Bern in Switzerland. 
So I bought it. And that was the beginning, essentially, of realizing that this guy received a large number of rappers from all over the world. You have a rapper here from New Zealand. The others in this particular case are all from the Caribbean. St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent. But that was not everything. Eventually I realized that there are even more. So you are looking here, there is one from Transvaal, which eventually became South Africa. But on the upper right, there is one from Guatemala. And in the middle, there are two rappers from the Ottoman Empire, right? So these are youth copies of the rappers that I showed earlier that are not, that are not, uh, that were not used. But then I realized it's not just a matter of rappers. This guy was receiving mail, postal stationary mail, all kinds of postal stationary mail. So for example, uh, here, and now I'm kind of getting out of rappers a bit, but it's a piece of postal stationery again, again from the Ottoman Empire sent to Monsieur uh, Zalsman, Monsieur F. Zalsman at 30 Justice, okay? And then looking more, right, here are, here is, a, here is an envelope from Zanzibar sent to F. Zalsman. And to the right is another one from the Ottoman Empire, an envelope. And here is a postal card from Zanzibar to F. Zalsman. So let me say that by now I have maybe 45, 50 items of social stationery that are from F. Zalsman. And you can tell that it has become an obsession because if I find one, I really try very hard to get it. Sometimes I don't because, you know, like eBay is an auction forum. So sometimes I get outbid or sometimes I just feel it's too expensive. For example, on Del Camp, there is a postal card that is, uh, that is marked up as at 140 euros. And I kind of have been looking at it for probably two, two and a half years. It is not sold. And I'm really, I'm really on the fence on whether to buy it or not. I'm aching on one hand. And on the other hand, I'm saying, well, you know, it's not really a wrapper. It's just postal stationery. That's not a wrapper. But one, one side of my brain says, buy it. And the other one says, hold off, hold off. So it's, 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 so this is my conflict. How about that? But he, one thing that's, so I have, I have enough of those to, I have started to, compare the handwriting on the different wrappers. And I think I can see that, for example, somebody was traveling across the Caribbean because there are many Caribbean wrappers who have the same handwriting, obviously, uh, uh, that uh, on the address. The address written was, by the, was written by the same hand. Uh, in general, it is very consistent the way it is but I have seen one case where, where that I don't have. I have, a, however, I captured the picture from the eBay, uh, uh, from the eBay, uh, uh, you know, from the eBay listing, where it is uh, addressed to F. Zalsman in Bern at a different address. Unfortunately, the address, the handwriting is so bad in my opinion that I couldn't quite decipher it yet. So looking at this, it's uh, one, one more thing before I proceed is this wrapper here gives us actually a good hint of maybe what is going on. 
this wrapper is from the from sent out of the Ottoman Empire, and it is it is the the can the 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 hand stamp on says Chakujian Yarumju, which is an Armenian stamp dealer because we know that he's a stamp dealer because in the middle is written tambre, which means postage stamps. And it is in, he, was, he was active in Constantinople. So if a stamp dealer is sending, into F, sending this to F. Salzman, and you can look at the others that are coming from the Ottoman Empire, from Turkey, and you see it is the same handwriting. It's always. So that means this one too. So that means this stamp dealer was sending these items to Zalsman. And, and, uh, and so it is possible that the others were also, maybe this guy had a, had a, had a network of stamp dealers who were sending him postal stationary items. So unfortunately, so, the next step was to do some kind of uh, research about who is this Zalsman, F. Zalsman. The, the thing that I found out is that Zalsman is a very common name. So I had really, uh, all the research that I did, I was not able to, to trace it down to a stamp collector or to a stamp dealer, unfortunately. So that was kind of a frustrating experience. The next step would be really to, to look in the philatelic literature to see if somewhere a Zaltzman is mentioned. And that is something that uh, eventually I will have to do. And that will be one of the things that I'm doing if I go to the, to the APS uh, I will go into the APRL and try to do some research there. However, I did look at 30 justice. Now, Bern is in the German speaking part of Switzerland. So in Bern, there is no such street as justice. However, I did find a 30 Gerechtigkeitsgasse and Gerechtigkeit means justice and Gasse is a small street. So my guess is that 30 justice refers to 30 Gerechtigkeit Gasse. And it is, it is at this location in Bern and from Google streets, this is the building. So if one of you guys ever decide to go to visit Bern, I would very much appreciate if you let me know and maybe you can go and see for me a 30 Gerechtigkeitsgasse or 30 Justice to see if there is a plaque on the building or any kind of information that says famous stamp dealer F. Zaltzman was active here or something like that. That's, that's what I have. So uh, now I'm happy to take any kind of questions you might have. Okay, folks, questions? Uh, this is Jim in Southwick. Uh, I noticed on that Mexican uh, spelling area you had on the same unit, uh, it was spelled correctly in the vertical uh, at the side of it. Here. Yeah, at the, at the side, it was Here? printed vertically. It's yes. spelled correctly. Let me, let me magnify it, make it a little bit bigger. Yes, it is here. Uh, you, are see, you, are, you are correct. It is, it is spelled correctly. So this is another indication that it was an in, in a, inadvertent error. And I can tell you in Spanish, Fahia, is written with two L's. That's, there is no ifs and buts about it. Samil, question. Um, on the production things, are these printed privately or by the post office? And, and who does the wrapping? 
I mean, uh, so that would, would the newspaper wrap them to people who are out of town and pay the postage, or how does that all work? I know in general, I think what happened is if you wanted to mail, uh, there were a couple of use cases. One of them is if you wanted to mail a newspaper to your friend in, in I don't know, if you were living in Argentina, you want to send a newspaper to a friend in Germany, you would essentially buy a wrapper from the post office, fold your newspaper, uh, and then not fold, well, either fold or, uh, uh, or uh, you know, create a, a rollout of the <coughs> paper and then put this around it, okay? The back of this has actually typically is here. Let me see. Well, here you can see it because I suspect that this has been also cut, uh, this right side. But in the back of this, usually there is, there is a, a, a strip of glue. So just mm -hmm. like a stamp, you... You wrap it around the newspaper and you wet the glue and then it stays closed. Now, the requirement was that the post, post office should see that inside of that there is only printed matter and nothing else without, necessarily, without opening it. That was really what was good for the post office, that to inspect something, they did, they did not have to open it. Okay. Uh, this was one use case. I think that when in cases, so there are uh, when publishers mail, you, mail newspapers to a large number of people, there are, there are different usages. I think that would have been way too labor incentive for a newspaper who sends hundreds or thousands of copies say either every day or twice a week or once a week to, 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 to subscribers. That would have been too much work, I think. For those, what would have been typically used, and for example, definitely in countries like uh, uh, Austria and, 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 and Turkey, I have seen examples, there would be actually the 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 a stamp, an indicium would be printed right on the newspaper paper, okay, and then the those printed those uh, those newspaper sheets that had already an indicium would be given to would be given to the printer to the printer of the newspaper copies, and he would pass those through the printing press to pass to print the content of the newspaper. So you will see at times an indicium that is overlaid with newspaper print. That's not uncommon. In other cases, there are uh, newspaper stamps that are applied, that are applied directly to a newspaper. So when newspapers are made in large quantities, that's a different use case. However, I see also many newspaper wrappers that appear uh, not to have been intended to use with newspapers. So, or for that matter, with any content. And I believe what happens is in those cases, people would print something onto the newspaper wrapper itself and mail the newspaper wrapper as such to a recipient. There is nothing wrong with it. There is nothing that says that you cannot mail a newspaper wrapper without content. It was not illegal. I have seen a case where actually in the, on, on a US wrapper, there was a time, I'm not quite sure, it might have been 20s, 30s, something like that. On the back of a newspaper, there is an ad advertising that somebody filed for bankruptcy. And if anybody has an objection to that bankruptcy, they should show up in court and prove their case. So it was a legal notice. And uh, uh, that is, to me, that is a very unusual way of using a newspaper wrapper. So 
essentially you could take such a wrapper, put an address on it, just send it out. This must, must have, may have been a cheap way, almost using the newspaper wrapper in a matter, way similar to, 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 a post, to a postal card, except you are using a newspaper wrapper. So there are really unusual uses of newspaper wrappers at times. I have seen newspaper wrappers that were actually used twice. Uh, uh, so, you know, once uh, in, the, in the expected way and the other way they were turned around and they were, I guess, soaked so that they could be taken off, for, you know, and they were wrapped around another newspaper and a stamp was put on it and they went through the mail twice when there was a paper shortage. There are all kinds of odd cases that you come across, which is why I think that newspaper wrappers are fascinating. Mm -hmm. The uh, the cover or the wrapper you had from Vienna early 1900s it was brown, I believe it was stamped to order. There was a label and then a brown stamp applied, which covered part of the the wrapper and the label. Do they yes. do that while you wait? Because that was a very clear impression. There. This yeah. is the guy. Let me enlarge this. Yes. I mean, you know, they, the, the, the cancel is even that nice. But I mean, that looks like it was just engraved right on there. Do they? I know. I know. Yeah. I know. It's... Uh, it's, uh, I was, uh, I had an article on this one in the EFO collector, essentially saying, uh, printed to be an EFO. Basically, it's, it's really an oddity the way I see it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, comment, uh, using wrappers for postage of, um, postcard type material. Uh, my background is of course the Lancaster situation where you have a wrapper with nothing inside it and nothing but an advertisement that says, please write for our catalog. Yes. From the Lancaster Watch Company. So it's exactly what you're talking about there. It is, um, an unusual usage of a wrapper. They got to pay it. They got to send it out for a penny. They couldn't send it any cheaper. Yes, precisely, precisely. Yeah. It's well, Paul. I have a couple of slides on a PowerPoint with some wrappers that I'd like Samil to look at. Sure, go ahead. So I let me just uh, unshare what okay. I have. Sorry. Could, no. I, could I make a comment first on that? I'm sorry. That Mexico? Yes. yes, let me share again uh, so that you can make the comment. If you can pull that one back up again, appreciate it. Then you can go on. Okay. So, which Mexico? This is the one with the uh, triple L printing error. Okay, yes. Oops. There you, there you go. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here reading the. Uh, the Mexico Postal, Postal Stationery Catalog, that there, that one centavo was always printed with the triple L. Hold on, no, this is not the one actually. That's not the right one. No. This one is the right there one. There you go. That was always printed with the triple L. It was never printed with a double. And then there's a two cent. There's a two cent red that has the same error on it. This is so. When is an know, error not an? When is an error not an error if it's constant? <laughs> well, actually, uh, I have to look at it, but definitely it's an error in the sense that it's a it's a it's a spelling error, right? That's absolutely correct. Absolutely right. correct. So. I was hoping we would find the thing also printed correctly, but it was not. No, I don't think so. Yes. Yeah, and the, and the two cent yeah. is the same error. Yes. Now there are other other versions of the the Mexicans. They had similar wrappers in many variations, right? 
That's so correct, yes. There is another one here that I took only a piece to show the correct spelling. Obviously, in another version, it was correct. Mm -hmm. Other questions for well, Jamil? I just got a comment on the Saltzman, one of the pages where you have Zanzibar. What I noticed that the Zanzibar postcard has a square cancel, and uh, yes, I didn't know they were used outside of of England, but that is very nice. That's a very nice cancel. Indeed, yes, and yeah. there are two of them, right? Right here too, on the on the yeah. envelope too. Mm -hmm. They were used in yeah, Canada that, too. Yeah, but they weren't used for a long period of time. I mean, in England, there was a short period where they went to square cancels and. They're not very common. Yes. So, you know, you, the way I see you can slice and dice this in many ways, the way to yeah. collect them, you yeah, know. Very that. true. That's... So. Uh... I, I have three slides for you to look at. Let Samuel. me unshare now, unless and somebody else wants to. Well, I can share again if necessary, yes. Go ahead and do you want to share or how do you want to show it? Great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you make it bigger? Yeah, that, is that good? But that's another one. The other one was the the Austrian one. Yeah, this well, good. this this is a wrap. This I'm starting with this one because this is my oldest one, going back okay. to 1890 and my collection of the Jubilee. Yes. This was a a wrapper taken into the exhibition just purely to get the cancel at the exhibition. Yes. And then mailed to this W.R. Wolf in Southampton, who happened to be the uh, secretary of the Southampton Boat Club. Okay. But I have only ever seen one of these with a cancellation from the uh, Jubilee exhibition. But the ones I wanted to show you um, these are three from Austria, yes, which yeah. are the announcement of the German Austrian Alpine uh, Association. Association, yeah. And these were sent to my great uncle, who at that time lived in Ulm. And then I've got three others. So you have a personal, a personal relationship with those three. Yeah, but I don't collect rappers, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really, I'm not that much interested in postal stationery. And these were sent from St. Gall, St. Gallen in Switzerland, um, to my father in in England. Yes. After he married, and this is where I live, Three Church Drive, till I was eleven. And it says Drucksucker, and this was sent from his cousin in St. Garm. Now, Samil, I don't collect wrappers or postal stationery. I'm more than willing to send these to you for your collection. So, oh, I would very much appreciate it. That would be very yeah. kind. And Paul, if you could let me know Samil's address. I will, I will do that. You. Yeah. I think these are three consecutive years. I think they're... Uh, 51, 52, and 53. Wonderful. I can tell you that this will, would take a special place in my collection. I have, you know, once in a while from philatelic friends, you receive a, you know, a present. And I always put those separately and they, they yeah. I really enjoy them. So I really will appreciate yeah. it. What is interesting, this Swiss one, the stamp and the print, it means that the um, paper goes through and it's horizontal. These, you put the paper in through and the print on the wrapper then is across the paper, not, yes. they're, they're two different directions. Correct. Yeah, so uh, I'm, Knowing that you have a, a collection and a fascination for this, I'm more than happy to let you send these to you. Thank you, I appreciate it. That oh, you're more than welcome. 
So, but I'm keeping my pride and joy of the British Jubilee. That's fine. <laughs> That's, uh, that's okay, fun. I will uh, somehow stop sharing. That's my little bit. But Mike, did you notice that that one of the postmarks was a double postmark on the uh, Jubilee? Yeah. Yeah, it's a double rarity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, he probably didn't pay two pence for it. He probably just paid the one pence, but... Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Other questions, comments on wrappers uh, for Samil? Okay. Well, with that, we'll give you the uh, silent cheer. And thank you. Thank you, thank you for listening. Very nice. Very well it. done. Well, very good. And I think.